Okay, I want to thank you. Thanks the organizers for inviting me. I think that this is the first time I speak here after the changing of the name of the auditorium. Uh, well, I, I will talk about the C1 stability, structural stability of mappings. The story begins with an Osov who proved the, the stability of diffeomorphisms, and then uh, Shub proved that uh, expanding maps are also C1 structurally stable. Things became a little bit more interesting in 76 and 77 when uh, uh, Psitisky and Manian Puk gave proofs that the Ananosov endomorphism is not stable unless it is a diffeomorphism or an expanding map. They gave some definitions. Well, the problem with this is that the problem for the stability of Anosov endomorphisms is that you have two points. If it is not a diffeomorphism, you have two points with the same image. And if it is not expanding, you have one dimensional or uh, unstable manifolds with not the, the dimension of the manifold, okay? with dimension less than the dimension of the manifold, that, that when you iterate, they became the same unstable manifold, and this is highly unstable, okay? So uh, the, these articles uh, for Manier yeah, and Puga and Shitisky <coughs> gave also some definitions to understand stability for maps that are not diffeomorphic. Okay, so I will give the definition of strong axiom A. Omega has hyperbolic structure, A2. Periodic points are dense. A3 is F restricted to omega minus E is one to one, where E is the union of expanding basic pieces. Okay, <clears throat> so if we have a um, an strong axiom A map, we have unstable uh, manifolds. Uh, each point in the non-wandering set has a unique prey image in the non-wandering set, and so you have a, a well-defined unstable manifold for this point. Okay, so if you um, suppose that you have a point here x that belongs to omega minus c, you have an unstable manifold. If you have another point here, also in omega minus c, you have another unstable manifold. And you may have intersections of these unstable, unstable manifolds in a non-wandering point, z. So we add, uh, we introduce a, another condition that is strong transversality. ST, saying that if you have a point Z with many pre-orbits converging to the non-wandering set, you will have unstable spaces, well-defined, because you have um, unstable manifolds that are differentiable. So you have unstable spaces for each of the pair orbits of Z that converge to omega. You have an unstable space. You, if you join all these unstable spaces,
through a point Z, and you join to this class the stable space, if you join this with the stable space, we are asking the strong transversality says that this is in general position. Okay, so let me uh, suppose that you have a here in dimension two to, to, to make an example of this, okay? You are in dimension two, you have here a stable manifold and, and an unstable manifold, this is, these are saddles. Suppose that there are saddle type fixed points, for example, I, I only we want, want to give an example of this. There you have here one unstable manifold, another unstable manifold, and you have a, a stable manifold passing through Z. The only possibility that you have three subspaces in dimension two being in general position is the stable space of Z is a plane, is two-dimensional, two okay? So this implies in dimension two that Z belongs to a basin of an attractor, of an attracting, fixed, uh, attracting periodic point. Okay, this is the condition of transversality we need when we are treating, when we are uh, working with endomorphisms. The theorem by now we are knowing this theorem. This is a lot of results joining a, in a statement. If F is strong axiom A. <coughs> and strong transversality, well, if and only if it is C1 stable. Okay, <clears throat> this theorem, um, um, C1 stable, um, this part was done something that, like 210 by my colleagues, Iglesias and Portela, <coughs> that prove this condition in dimension two. The other parts were already known. C1 stability implies, well, in the paper by Pschitiski, he proved that C1 stable plus A1 plus A2 implies A3. Okay, so this condition is necessary for stability <coughs> when you have the, this is done in 77, it is very ancient before the proof of Manier of the stability conjecture. So in, in it, this is done by Shitisky. 77, C1 stability in place implies A1 plus A2 was proved by Aoki Moriyasu and Sumi in 203, I think. <clears throat> and the, the other the other, the other part, this implies the strong, stabil the strong transversality. It is easy and we don't in, in this same article. <clears throat> so, well, before uh, it is done as a long, long time, we didn't know examples of structural stable maps apart from the endomorphisms and the expanding maps. The 
the construction given here of this proof uh, permits us to, to prove that the example given by Shitisky, he, he gave an example and proposed it as a structurally stable map in 77. We prove it that this example follows within this hypothesis, and so it is C1 stable. This is the first example known of a C1 stable map in dimension two. Let me tell, um, well, there, there are other examples constructed with the same ideas of Shitisk. Okay, um, the work we are trying to develop now is to classify uh, structural stable maps. And we are um, first motivated by the case of dimension one that is very easy. If you have a map F of, the, of S1, <coughs> a covering map, then you have a, a, a semi-conjugacy. with an expanding map of the circle. And then you can do something like that. You can put, you can open windows in periodic orbits. For example, I will open a window in this periodic orbit. This map I don't know if it is easy to see, but has uh, one, two, three, four periodic uh, fixed points here. This map has a Cantor set that is an expanding basic piece and has an open interval here, from here to here. This open interval is carried by the semiconjugacy to a point. So uh, we, it is easy to see that the following data, if you have a map F, you give the degree of F, you choose a finite set of periodic orbits Yes, uh, yes. C one stability always implies that there are not critical points. So, okay, but it's not, do not follow from the A one, A three. No, no, it is. It, no, no, no. So you assume there is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yes. Uh, C one stability implies, uh, of course, maybe. Uh, yes, it may be I, 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 I said it before. If it's a covering up. <coughs> Okay. Yes. Thank you. Well, you choose a finite set of periodic orbits and open a window in each of which in each of them. In each window, you can put any diffeomorphism you like, but a diffeomorphism of, of the interval is just a map like this. You can say that it has uh, a finite number of period of fixed points or points of the same period that are attracting. Okay, so a finite, uh, uh, <coughs> a natural number. For each window. Okay, this is a finite data that is sufficient to classify the conjugacy class of a stable map. Okay? So we try to follow this idea to give a, a classification of stable maps in dimension two. So we have two big problems here. The first problem is the following. <coughs> Which kind, of, if which, which kind of maps you can find in an open region? This is the first problem.
in an invariant region, okay? <clears throat> so as to imitate this part, okay? This problem was sufficiently well resolved until now through a series of articles and the answer comes from this theorem. <coughs> we, prove, we proved with the same friends and also with Juliana Xavier that is working with us now and we prove that if you have Assume that you have a map F from an open set in a manifold of dimension F is a map of a manifold of dimension 2, okay? <clears throat> and assume that you have an open set U such that the image of U is contained, the closure of the image is contained in U, and you define A as the intersection of the images of U and call this an attracting set. Assume also that F restricted to A is a D to one map from A to A. With this hypothesis, we can conclude that the restriction of F to the immediate basin of A, the immediate basin is, uh, I, I am assuming that A is connected. With this hypothesis, it has only finitely many components, so I will suppose that it's connected. It is not a, an assumption, indeed. Uh, well, uh, with this hypothesis, F restricted to the, to the immediate basin is also D to one covering. <clears throat> this uh, theorem is, is true only in dimension two because in other dimensions you can have that the map restricted to an attractor is of class, is, has, is a two to one or one to one map, but you, when you begin to create the immediate basin, in one point, at what point that you begin to iterate backward, iterate the neighborhood of attraction of A, you will find another preimages of A in the immediate basin. And so the restriction of F to the immediate basin ceases to be a D to one covering and maybe a D plus one to one covering, maybe. Okay? So I will <clears throat> perhaps I will speak a little bit about the proof of this. <clears throat> But let me draw some conclusions first. If F is strong axiom A, then the attracting sets are one to one. So the restriction of F to the immediate basin of an attracting set must be also one to one. So it is a diffeomorphism. So if you find some structural stable map in dimension two, you must have an attractor, and in the immediate basin of the attractor, you will have that the map is one to one, okay? So this immediate basin has pre-image that is disconnected with the immediate basin, okay? And the other has pre-images that are disconnected, so you find the picture you have in dimension one. You have a midi basin and the, the pre-images are all disjoint and no, are not connected with, with that, okay? <clears throat> so you, we can try now to give a, a classification of endomorphisms, modulo, diffeomorphisms. So you have a, imagine you have an immediate basin here of a, of a fixed point, for example, and you choose to put here any diffeomorphism you like that is stable. You want to put here a, a repeller, and you have to put, you can put here a, a horseshoe, 
okay, you will obtain another stable map, but you change it the class of stability. So we pretend, just pretend, to we try no? uh, to, to classify modulo diffeomorphisms. That is, if you have a diffeomorphism, you can have a, a diffeomorphism, then uh, this diffeomorphism will be contained in an invariant region. Yes, an invariant region, okay. And so uh, you can put the diffeomorphism you like. As we, do, uh, we did here, here you can put any diffeomorphism in dimension two is also true, okay? <clears throat> in dimension three this, three, this is not true because in the immediate basin you can have a lot of things. You can have a, an endomorphism restricted to the immediate basin, okay? So the, the, we are trying to classify modulo diffeomorphisms, okay? <clears throat> Well, a uh, second conclusion from... So I'm not sure if you understand. You're, it's a modulo diffeomorphism into immediate basin or some fucking... Modulo diffeomorphism into immediate basins. In, okay. Into immediate bas basins, of course, does not make sense because these points, you have an invariant set here that is not in the immediate basin, but it's, it is in the interior of the closure of the immediate basin. Okay. okay? <coughs> You can have here a horseshoe, for example, okay, or any diffeomorphism you like. <clears throat> so, okay, let me tell. There is another consequence. Imagine you have another uh, again a, a strong axiom A map, and you do the union of the unstable manifold of points that do not belong to E points that are not expanding, then this is an attracting set. This is an attracting set and suppose it is it is not true or suppose by absurd that it ha that it's, it, it is one to one. Hmm? Then if it is one-to-one, -one, it will be one-to-one -one in the immediate basin of A. Okay, this is not a, a, an attractor because it is not transitive, but the, the theorem here holds for attracting sets. Suppose that it is one-to-one, -one, then it will be one-to-one -one in the immediate basin, but if you see the boundary of the immediate basin, you will only have expanding basic pieces. Okay, the, the remaining of the manifold only has expanding basic pieces. So from this we conclude that the boundary of uh, base, immediate basins must be a set of one point because an expanding basic piece cannot have more than one point because you, when you begin to iterate we are assuming connected because when you begin to iterate a neighborhood uh, a curve surrounding the, the attractor, if you are converging, past iterators are converging to an expanding basic peaks, the only, the only way is that the expanding basic peaks was a point. So from this we conclude that F was a diffeomorphism. So it is absurd to suppose to assume that this map is one to one. The conclusion is the following. If the map is not one to one here, that is because there are saddle type basic points, uh, saddle type periodic points, and the unstable manifolds of these unstable must intersect. It's the only way that this set is not unstable, is not one to one. The conclusion is. SA in dimension two always has, always have saddles under and unstable and intersections.
Okay? <clears throat> this is not, not necessarily true in, dimension, in greater dimensions, in dimension bigger than two, but in dimension two, you, we have this problem. Well, but uh, this problem is more or less solved. So you have an idea of how to begin the construction of a conjugacy between two maps that are structurally stable. In the basins, you have a diffeomorphism. You have to have the same diffeomorphism or conjugated diffeomorphism in each basin, and then you will produce, you will begin to produce this, the conjugacy. Okay, but there are there are more problems. The second problem is with the semi-conjugacy we have for one-dimensional maps. Let me say that second part of this is if you have f a covering. <clears throat> then the a covering map has a, um, a inducing map on, on homology. We have A induced linear <clears throat> map homotopic to F. And so we have some possibilities for A or it is expanding, maybe it is non-hyperbolic, or maybe it is hyperbolic, but not expanding. OK, well, in this case, it is already known um, that you have a semi-conjugacy between F and the map induced by A in the torus. Yeah? So in this case, expanding, you have the semi-conjugacy. In this second case, <coughs> it is not difficult to show that the induced map is semi-conjugated to a one-dimensional map. So, uh, from results of, from Schub in 1969, it follows also that F is semi-conjugated. Well, in this case, you have a, a, a negative value of, the, of one or minus one, we are in dimension two, okay? We are in dimension two, one eigenvalue is equal to one or minus one, and the other one is greater than one in absolute value, okay? You have three and one, for example. So F is semi-conjugated <coughs> to Z, ZD in this, in this one. So in both, in both in first and second cases, we have a semi-conjugacy that is satisfactory to produce the conjugacy we want to produce when the data are the same for the both endomorphisms. Okay? So it remains this case, and this is uh, the, the stone we find in the road, and we, can, we cannot still uh, advance anymore because we are trying to understand this problem and, and, and we have just questions. <clears throat> the first question that we cannot solve <clears throat> is if there exists This is the first question we cannot solve until by now, by the moment. <coughs> you, you, you know that A is an anos of endomorphism that it is not uh, expanding, so it is uh, not stable. And the question is if there is someone stable in the homotopy class. We cannot uh, arrive to an answer for this question. And the second one is 
if there is one, if there is, we, we want to know if it is semi-conjugated. to the user map in the two terms. <coughs> OK, there is, there is, of course, a semi-conjugacy that you have all, all, also when the map is non-hyperbolic. But this semi-conjugacy conjugates the inverse limit of the map F with the inverse limit of the map A. But not, uh, I wouldn't know if, you, if we, even in this case, of course, this conjugacy, semi-conjugacy cannot uh, be uh, uh, taking to the terms, no? okay, this is, uh, uh, this is false. Uh, but even in this case, we don't know if it is possible to do it or not. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Questions?